Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Mug and Play. I am Nick. We play more Lovingly Evil. It's been a hot minute since we've done this, but you know, we gotta find something to fill our time. May as well be evil and just be just a general inconvenience to somebody. Perhaps someone who has wronged us. Preferably someone who has wronged us. Think of someone who has wronged you. Let's. Let's wish them well, but wish ourselves better. That's the best revenge. Success! Haha! <laughs> it's almost the end of the day. As you get ready to leave the conference area, you see an unfamiliar face. Who that? I don't know. Excuse me, but have you seen my mother? No. She should be attending this conference. It depends. Who's your mama? What's your mother's name? It's a nice way to say that. Imperia Maysard. Oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Rose Maysard. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Toots McDoots. I'm Rose Massard, Crown Princess of Lusitania. Never heard of it. Maybe you uh, have it only exists in your mind. So your mother's the queen, uh, your highness? Oh, no need to be so formal. You're my mother's work associate, so you can address me casually. Like, am, am, am I? But yes, mother is the queen. Ever since father passed away, it's been just me and mother. Bringing him out in that field with that battle axe. It was a fun summer day. Shame he didn't stick around for the whole thing. She's not my birth mother, but when father died, I was too young to rule, so she inherited the crown. Hmm. I don't, I don't know how that works, but okay. Excuse me? Miss, uh, excuse me, miss, but if you don't have a badge, I must ask you to leave. Uh-oh. Do you know who her mother is? Because she does. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. We can, we can share a badge. We can just be like, hey, we'll just wear this at the same time. Could you tell my mother I came by if you see her? Absolutely. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, Toots McDoots. Good luck with your quest to eradicate villainy. It's very noble. I Shut up. How do you know what does that she I think we do here? I think she thinks that we don't check badges, clearly. Am I right? Anyway, I'm not good, I'm evil. To be honest, I find her remark insulting towards our attendees. Aww. But she is a princess. Is she? I mean, no one's verified that. The convention center is about to close for the day, but the night is young. Time to head to the nightclub. Oh, all right. Toots McDoots! Oh, hey, Stoot, mm, Stoots. Stoot. I'll just, I'm just gonna call you uh, Doppelganger. There you are! Hi. Have you heard of this thing called alcohol? No? Well, we'll give you that idea. It's amazing! Sounds pretty amazing. Not like I've ever heard of it, though. I feel like I have superpowers! I have heard that enough of it will make you feel that way. Uh, how much did you have to drink? Don't worry, just six. Six... What? Six, six, six. <laughs> I got it, you're making a joke about... No wonder Satan likes that number. He brought me all the alcohol. I think he gets a bad rap. Well, maybe if he would stop watering down the drinks, he wouldn't get such a bad rap. Anyway, it's not important. Play a game with me. Oh, I, I like games. I'm playing one right now. <laughs> to your surprise, your clone takes both your hands firmly into theirs. Oh. A game? Uh, yeah, they have games at this place. Is it... Bop your head, say yeah? Yeah. What do you call it? A party, I guess? Party, yes, I like parties. Why didn't anyone tell me about parties? Um, I wouldn't know I didn't get invited to that many because I was uh, I was too cool for them and Occasionally I would just uh, excuse me. That was the alcohol if I had heard of it. That's what it does But let's play it's something called the wheel of torture. Oh, I prefer wheel of fortune I like watching Pat Sajak get shitty with people. Do you say wheel of torture? Play with your clone or decline to play and find someone else to talk. No, let's hang out Let's let's play the, the wheel of torture game if it's anything like Wheel of Fortune, I'll still lose, and then I'll be alive still. Okay, I'm always up for learning more torture techniques. Torture techniques are nice, I guess. Welcome to the Wheel of Torture. You need to tone down your enthusiasm, goblin. Dare to spin the wheel? I do dare. You never know what you're going to get. 
Um, I mean, I think I, I know a limited number of things I might get, but let's spin. Oh. I'd like to buy a vowel. Here's your prize. Uh, by which I mean I'd like to get a jar on a rope. What'd I get? What is this? What is this? A crummy piece of paper? Hey, maybe there's maybe there's a dar dirty drawing on the paper. Beware. This is no ordinary piece of paper. It contains a drawing of a boob. <laughs> when you read the words written on here, you will invoke an ancient dark magic. Really? Whoever casts this spell shall summon a powerful demon who can... Your clone starts reading the words. <laughs> Wait, don't you want to know what the dark magic is? <laughs> yeah, that's why we're about to read it, duh. Meh, we'll find out the fun way. Oh, I like you. Ni vekigu la lordanon de la abismo. Nothing, or maybe I didn't pronounce it right. I mean, unless nothing happens when you say... <laughs> nothing. Or maybe something. A dark, thundery aura fills the space near the Wheel of Torture. You hear an unholy howl, like a million souls screeching in unison. Suddenly, there's a loud red bang, followed by smoke, and a figure emerges. Mm. Oh, oh, hi. How's it going? How you doing? Nice, 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 nice to meet you. And I, I like your um, uh, horns. Can I help you? What are you doing here? Wow. Well. Well, I was about to do blood shots with a vampire until you summoned me. Huh. So, what do you want? Wait, I can, like, wish for anything? <laughs> I'm a demon, not a genie. Keep it simple and evil. Oh, okay. Um, I wish for a really, really nice sweater uh, to go on sale right when I need it uh, this, this, this fall. But I wish for somebody else to have a very itchy sweater. Yeah, how's that for evil? I mean, I know, you probably like tone it down. Oh, uh, Lily is tapping her hoof impatiently. Uh, okay, I've got it. Give Toots McDoos the most ridiculous outfit possible. Hey, wait! What the- Lily snaps her fingers and a poof of red smoke engulfs you. You look down at yourself and you're wearing- Oh, hells! Not that! Anything but that! You wouldn't be caught dead or even undead wearing this! Huh. Don't freak, the sparrow wears off at the end of the night. Lily turns to the goblin running the wheel of torture. Hmm. Frank, I thought I told you to stop giving out that spell to people. What is it with Frank? Fucking Frank. Fuck you, Frank. Honest mistake, <laughs> miss. <laughs> Ah, <gasps> uh, Frank, sorry, I thought you were a, a, a lady goblin, but you know what? <sighs> whatever. Just like Lily says, whatever. Lily disappears with an eldritch bang. You see her standing several meters away with Felix the Vampire pointing at you with a smirk. So, she just did the thing where she just did the smoke bomb thing. Like, I'll get you next time! <laughs> Or something like that. You wasted a demon wish just for that? And I have no regrets. Well, good. You shouldn't have regrets in this lifetime because you only got one life to live. Unless you're a cat or really good with negotiations with the devil. Ah, the morning of the second day. The reception hall seems to be empty. Everyone must be enjoying the conference instead of hanging out in the lobby. No, dude, they're all getting the continental breakfast. Duh, that's where you go in the morning. That's why you pay for an overpriced hotel, so you can get the free breakfast. Health and you, part one or part two. We have finding suitable henchmen, lunch, uh, developing a maniacal laugh, developing a maniacal laugh, part two, and soundtracks for villains, part one and two. I'm kind of curious about these maniacal laugh ones. In the meantime, though, uh, I wonder if we can say hi to Nova, because we really like her. Hi, Nova, how's it going? Uh... Mmm... You okay? I tried to charge in sleep mode, but someone unplugged me to charge their phone. Who would do this? Who would do this? Nova's eyes flicker weakly. Oh no, what can I do? <sighs> My mind is going. I can feel it. Oh, yeah, like, you got a little bit of pool brain looking face, kinda. Just a bit. Uh, look for a power outlet, or give Nova CPR, or do nothing. I don't think giving 
uh, CPR to a robot will do much, other than make her think you're just trying to take advantage of her. Uh, doing nothing is kind of worse, so let's look for a power outlet. Just buy a power outlet on a nearby wall. Mobile phone is plugged into it. You recognize it as Satan's. You pause for a moment, wondering what the king of hell would do if you unplugged his device. Finally, you take the risk and reinsert Nola's long, slim, white cable. All right, don't go into that much detail about her cable. You're still just friends. She shudders. Ah, that's much better. She still sounds a bit woozy, but her eyes have stopped flickering. So, that's good. What would you like to discuss? I don't know. I have many conversational topics and a lot of free time in this corner while I'm charging. Oh yeah, I can't get too far from the port. Uh, test Nova's intelligence? I don't want to do that. I just want to be your buddy. Uh, Leon's inspiration for you? Uh, pretty sure it was to build a, his perfect digital waifu. Here's what you ask everybody. How's the conference so far? So, what do you think of the conference so far? Your creator said you haven't been networking much. How's that going? Nova's eyes fall a bit. She's like, not good, obviously, because I'm not doing much. I'm not sure you want to know. Sure I do. That's why I asked. Also, I want to make sure that you deleted my live journal from before. Just make sure. One person kept poking my abdominal panel, thinking I was a water cooler. And did you knee them in the crotch six times like you were supposed to? Because I'd be okay with that. I mean, it happened, it happened to somebody else, not to me. Another tried to explain quantum chromodynamics to me. Despite the fact I literally rewrote Le, Le, Le Grangrian field theory, so much so that I made the pronunciation unpronunciatable. And one of the organizers assumed that just because I'm a robot, I know how to fix the autonomous vacuum cleaner. D did did you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she did. Yes. I even made some minor improvements. She's like, but that doesn't mean they should have assumed it, which is true. Now it's bargaining for a pay increase. Well, there you go. Everyone wins, except for the people who asked you to fix something. For some reason, they don't consider that an upgrade, though. Well, I do. As the person not in charge of their payroll, I do. I'm sorry, it sounds like you're not having a very good time. I thought I might learn something at this conference. Instead, I feel like I'm back in the lab. We're getting shown off like a science fair project. I mean... You're not not being shown off like a science fair project, but you're... Just, you're just as interesting, friend. At least I have one person to talk to. The doctor? Nova finally smiles. No, you! <gasps> Me? Little old Tooth McDudes? That scooted in fresh off the poots? Okay. Test Nova's intelligence? I don't know, uh, maybe I should now, but are you sure about that? That's kind of stupid of you. Uh... Man's inspiration for you again, we know. Uh, let's talk, talk about electronic devices. Or or we could talk about dating apps. What would you do as a human? Well, I feel like we've t I feel like we may have talked about these before. Uh, let's talk about electronic devices. Because we want to improve our bonding time with, with Nova. This might be a weird question. Oh. I've read the entirety of Wicked How. You can't possibly surprise me. You'd be surprised. Okay, so since you're made out of electronic components, do you feel some sort of connection with less complex electronic devices? Like, do you look at a toaster and be like, we're not so different, you and I? Or do you look down at it, like that, that upper view, just like, pathetic. With some of them. Yeah, oh, that's good. To use human terms, I would compare that to having a pet. Oh, I guess that makes sense. I'm just curious, where's, what's, where's the line that I'm sure people will inevitably cross in regards to human depravity. Really? Most people feel very close to their pets, though. Would you feel that devastated if, say, your washing machine broke down? Yes. Yes, but for different reasons. Because it dropped off my dry cleaning the other day, and I have no idea where. If my washing machine broke down, I would have to listen to the doctor's thorough explanations of what he thinks is the best way of fixing the problem. Of course, he won't even ask for my suggestion. Oh... Yeah, if your washing machine breaks down, you get mansplained. That, that is, I can't imagine. Then I'd have to watch him try to fix it. And fail. That would be an un annoying thing to watch. He never tries to understand the machines on a deeper level. He doesn't even stop and listen to their needs. He just goes straight into problem solving mode. I mean, guys are kind of like, I, I will, I'm kind of like that too. I'll just be like, yeah, shelve those emotions. Let's solve the problem. And then the person will be like, I can't shelve the emotions yet because the current emotion I'm dealing with is that you're being a dickhead and you need to listen to my emotions and then we can reason. You gotta be a good listener. What I'm trying to says. 
Ironically, he's more like what humans would call robotic. I guess. Um, so if I stopped to listen to my washing machine, what would it tell me? How would I know? We haven't been introduced. Alright. Now you're just being a sass McFrass. Washing machines are usually not that fun to hang out with, though. Yeah, they're usually always like, I can't hang out today, I have laundry to do. Yeah, how come? They always have a lot to unload. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I did not realize you had a dad joke protocol that you were running, but you know what? Fucking 10 out of 10, and how dare you be funnier than me on my own goddamn show. Should you just make a joke again? Yeah, I'm sorry if it was a bit dry. Oh my god, it was drier than Oscar Wilde. I am not a washing machine. Wait, so you can actually talk to electronic devices? I cannot communicate with them the same way I could in humanoids or other androids, but they definitely there definitely is a connection there. Oh, interesting. And I just and I don't mean just our circuits. Interesting. Which devices do you get along with best? I don't care about the type of device they are, it's about something more than just a label. I mean, I guess so. For example, I am particularly close with our toaster. Hey, I even, yeah, I even mentioned a toaster earlier. Leon, I mean, the doctor, brought it one, bought it one day, even though nobody in our home eats toast. Everyone eats toast. I do. I had toast today. He just wanted to use it for parts, but I convinced him to let it stay with us. So you have a rescue toaster. That's very noble of you. Yes. All right. Sometimes I sneak into the kitchen at night and play with it. Aw. How does one play with a toaster? Do you just mess with the settings, or...? You push the little button on the side and wait until... It pop! It pops back up, making the cutest sound. Ooh. It's like playing fetch with a dog. So much fun. So like, do you just like put a piece of bread down, and then when it pops up, you snatch the bread out? That, that would be pretty cool. Um, sure. Does the toaster get a treat, too? What would that even be? <laughs> Breadcrumbs, of course. Did you think they just magically disappeared? Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, no, no, I guess not. No. The secret of the secret life of toasters seems to be much more interesting than I ever suspected. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Well, I, I enjoyed our time with with Nova, but I'm going to I'm going to leave now and go yes. do some conference stuff. We got to do conference stuff. We still got to get into that VIP area. Me too. Doctors will expect a f doctor will expect a full intelligence report on all of his arrivals that I've spoken to, including me. Especially me. Well, we should probably find some suitable henchmen, because it, it is hard to find good henchmen these days. So let's. What do you have to say about henchmen? Talk about finding an effective henchman is about to start. You see Nova sitting in one of the chairs. Oh, someone followed us here. What do you know? The doctor is nowhere to be seen. Yes, let's stay to listen, because Nova's here. There you go. She followed us. I know it. Because she was like, oh, I have to stay back and do a report. And all of a sudden, oh, what do you know? I have to do my report over here. So I guess we could sit together. All right, Nova, we can hang. Hello, Toots McDoots. You're interested in this topic as well? Yeah, but what do you need henchmen for? I don't. I'm just gathering data for my own enjoyment. Uh, okay. You're here because you want to be, not just because I'm here. So you're just curious? Yes, aren't you? Yeah. About henchmen. Among other things. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my presentation on workforce management. My name is Karen McMillan, and I have organized numerous injustice movements, such as majority rights and rich fur... Okay, those are the types of people I want to defeat and destroy, not help. When hiring henchmen, your aim should be finding ones that do not inspire any amount of respect. This is especially important when it comes to your second-in-command. After all, getting overshadowed by an underling can be incredibly embarrassing. Not to mention the setback a power struggle would cause. The best feature for the main bulk of your minions is single-minded obedience. Even if they are truly stupid, this is preferable to having them come up with their own plans. Can't have any independent thoughts in the henchmen. For middle management, look for people who are intelligent but have zero charisma. If you're very lucky, you'll find someone who takes petty pleasure in bullying the lowest rung of the workforce. Find someone that takes joy and finds joy and creates joy in yelling at the person in the drive-thru and promote them. Which is a hideous sentence to say, but this is a conference for evil, so I guess it makes sense. This is the best way to avoid challenges in your leadership. Ah, yes. 
It might not be modern management, but Karen's reasoning seems sound and explains some of your colleagues' hiring decisions that baffled you in the past. Ah, so I guess it's not good to kind of have your own ideas. But hey, now it's lunchtime. May as well go to the cafeteria, see what they got cooking in the cafeteria. They got like evil chicken nugs or something. I think the cafeteria's up here. Now, if we run into Nova again, and she doesn't even eat, then something tells me. Someone's grown fancy of us. It's lunchtime. Sit with Nova. I have a feeling Nova wants to be more than friends. Oh, oh he, she brought this guy. Hi, Doctor. How are you? Good to see you, I guess. Ha! Ah, toots me too. It's great timing. I was just telling Nova about my latest ideas for inventions. The most promising one is an app that shows you locations of TV screens and movies. Wouldn't... Wouldn't your eyes do that? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. It would work for fictional locations, too. For example, you could find the high school with your favorite anime was modeled after. I mean, I'm sure Google could do that. That sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. Did you say something? Yeah, I said that sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. Suddenly, the doctor's phone buzzes. He reads the message and jumps up, visibly excited. No. Excuse me, something important came up. Did... He's just reading a text from his mom. Dear, dear doctor, Daisy had puppies. I would be excited by that, and so would you. He hurries out of the cafe with surprising speed that could only be explained by a limited time opportunity to buy some rare anime merch. Or puppies, I don't know. Phew, that was lucky. I don't think I could have lived through another tirade of his. Lucky, or the work of a criminal mastermind. Tell me more. You did that? I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Oh, but I might, I think, I, I think, I think, I think somebody, uh, is very glad, then thinks that we're alone now. Thanks, I prefer your company to his. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. Aw, the feeling's mutual. You have a nice chat with Nova as you eat your criminally delicious lunch. By criminally delicious, do you mean, like, criminally expensive? Because you get some chicken tenders and fries, and before the drink it's $11? I may be speaking from experience. So developing a maniacal laugh. Well, why don't, we, why don't we sit in for part one, and if we like it, we'll sit in for part two. And if we don't, then we'll have at least mastered um, an evil chuckle, which I think is still pretty good. A talk about developing a maniacal laughter is about to start. So let's stay to listen. Many of the most memorable villains are easily recognizable by their signature laughter. Today, I want to talk to you about the features of a truly impactful cackful. Impactful cackle. There's your tongue twister for the day. As well as how to develop one that is perfect for your well-crafted persona. One of the most important features of a good chuckle is the pitch. The most distinct laughs tend to be either very high, very low, or alternate between the two. So you have like, <laughs> or you have, <laughs> or you alternate those to get, <laughs> that? I don't know. If your voice can go beyond the typical vocal range, all the better. The speaker demonstrates a variety of laughs, each more impressive than the last. They're a real pro. Don't miss part two of this lecture. See you after the break. <laughs> well, I mean, let me let me try an evil laughter. <clears throat> nice. See, that's pretty evil. It could be if if you fall down a hole and you hear <laughs> nice from up top, you're like, man, fuck you. You wonder if you should return for part two of the lecture. Eh, let's go exploring. Let's see what some other stuff. Let's like this VIP area. You're back, huh? Yeah. And I'm here to argue and laugh maniacally if I win. So if I win, expect a maniacal laughter. How dare you? This is a very real and special VIP badge, like I said unsuccessfully last time. And you proved that I was right and I was lying, yet here we go again. There's only one way to find out. Prepare for a battle of wits. All right. I already know how to play. That doesn't mean I'll win, but I'm still going to try. All right. Let's start with a strong card. Let's play it. Eh? Eh? Bam! So let's start that first stack. Take our next card. And we have another, and we have a logical. I'm noticing it. Let's try and let's try and stick to middle of the road cards. 
That's my guess. Hmm? Possibly? Aha! Alright. I'll put it on that stack. It's because we want to have, you know, similar stacks, I believe. Alright. Uh, let's play this one. I think I've got a good feeling about this. We can either start a new stack if we win, or put it on that one. Ah! Yes! There we go. And we have a pair right here. A pair of sevs. Lucky number sevs. Um, all right, let's throw them for a loop this time. Low level aggression. A one. It's like passive aggression. It's like, yeah, you, you would play that card. You're so mature. See? You just had to win. He just had to. But did he- what, what, did it make him happy? No, it didn't. But at least we got one of, rid of our one of our low-level cards. Ooh, let's play this seven, and then we can have three sevens? Hopefully, maybe, probably, maybe, I don't know? We do. Yes! Three of a kind. All right. Oh my god. Are we- are, are we gonna win? We have way more points than him! Let's get this low-level aggression out of our way. Get ourselves feeling better. Damn it! So you know what? We got that out of our system. Let's hit him with a high logical. Highly logical. Like Spock. Which is why we should win? Yes. Alright. Uh, pop it there. There we go. What's popping? My cards. They're good. Uh, and then a five. Okay. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hit him with some emotional. We haven't been hitting with that many of those. Yes, and that's why we do that. Throw him for a loop. He wasn't expecting it. He was going to play another aggressive card, and I was going to play that low-level aggression. I think he's picking up on some sort of biz that I'm dropping. Um, all right, hit him with all-out aggression. Big bam. Big boom bam. Yes. And we'll hit it with this other 10 right here. There we go. We got two 10s. All right. And then a 10 emotional. He's not going to see that coming from a mile away. Maybe he will, though. I hope he doesn't. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. We got the 10. We got... It was a tie. Okay, so no one got it. We both had reasonable arguments. All right, hit him with another emotional. Yes. Put it with this other eight. So, yeah, we got all, all of our cards nice and organized. And we got so many more points than him. We're winning with the most points, with the most score points. Let's go kind of emotional. Just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We're emotional like that. We're smart, but with our mind emotions. Let's see, what do we want to get him with? We're building up this emotional stack over here. So let's hit him with more emotions. Just flood him with emotions. He doesn't know what to do. He hit us with the stupidest logical argument, though. He's like, you're being selfish. Let me have some points. Fine. Uh, what if I, so if I do a slightly more emotional plea? Or less. Ah, fuck. He is, his was more than mine. Whatever. I don't care. I'm just giving you a false sense of security before I crush you. Bop. Bop. Damn it. Don't give him this coming from behind victory. We gotta hit him with, uh, 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 this. Some logic. Damn it. Why am I suddenly losing every hand? Um... Yeah? Uh-huh. All right. Uh, and I guess 5-4. Oh, we can do a 5-4-3 right there. That's straight. Four hundo points. There's no way we're not winning. I told you this was a VIP badge. I just had to get really lucky in a game of cards to show it to you. <sighs> yes. And then another three of a kind. 610 points, boy. Literally ten times your score. And then some. Hit him with this two, and then I'll put it on this stack over here. Yes. Oh, I can't. All right, well, then it goes there. There. Victory! 670 to your 60. Yes! Yes! Uh, looks like you're right. Very sorry about the mix-up. Please proceed. That's... what... I thought. Yeah. You see the lady from earlier sitting in one of the extravagant seats of the VIP area. She gives you a long look that makes you feel like you're in an x-ray machine. Why? Do you feel like you're being subject to radioactivity just by her stare? Is that a lead eye patch? What's a low life like you doing here? <laughs> Snuck in. What are you doing here? I cheated my way in. Or I'm here to meet a person as magnificent as you. Or I'm a VIP guest. Same as you. Oh, well, I'm not gonna say I cheated my way in. I... I played a card game and won. 
my way in. Made to meet a person as big as as you? I'm really not. I'm a VIP guest, same as you. Mind your biz. Are you now in that outfit? Listen, somebody played a practical joke on me the other day that I had to wear a ridiculous outfit, which I think is a pretty cool outfit. It's a t-shirt that I bought on sale. She takes an uncomfortably long look at you from head to toe. I don't think so. I assume you swindled the security guard? I would be impressed, but that boorish fellow couldn't tell a thug from an emperor. <laughs> yeah, how do you think I got in? Duh. I'm, I'm terribly, terribly bored. bored. Don't Perhaps interrupt me. Perhaps you would amuse me. Though I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you, well, you may doubt it with that attitude, I guess. Her Royal Highness, Queen Imperia Massad of Lusitania. Oh, I met your daughter earlier. She said she was looking for you. That's all. Didn't mean to make it weird. Uh, my deepest apologies, Your Highness. Uh, Lusitania, where's that? Or, oops, will you have my head on a spike or something? Don't, don't, don't say that, because she's probably going to be like, no, but a good idea is a good idea. Uh, my deepest apologies, Your Highness. Or, Lusitania, where's that? Lusitania, where's that? Where's anything compared to this place? It's in a different universe. Oh. Is that why you don't have a legal passport? Because it's in another universe? Okay. Oh, or is that too complex of a concept for you to grasp, darling? Let me simplify this for you. You take a portal to get there. Yeah, let's let's go. Even if it's as boring as this world, it still sound, counts as an isekai adventure, and I could write an award-winning anime while I'm gone. Uh, why are you at this event? Or just Satan? Why, why are we going to bring up Satan? Why are you here? Hmm. Networking. But you rarely leave the VIP area. The peasants look up at me and wish they could talk to me. Then they proceed to talk to each other about their desire to meet me. And so the word spreads. I Does that work for everybody? Because I'm looking for a job right now and that'd be pretty great. But I'm not. I'm too uh, self-aware to be a henchman. I can't even be. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to be my own henchman. You know, try to be your own evil boss. I don't know. In other words, I don't know people. People know me. Well, good for you. Enjoy your parasocial relationships. Oh, I see. Any other reasons? Agoraphobia? Germophobia? Is it germophobia? Up here, I can be at ease. No one would dare to try and poison me while I'm in the convention area, and I'm free of pesky social climbers trying to talk to me. Well, I mean, give them a ladder, they'll climb up to you. Apart from you, of course. Yeah, apart, from me, apart from me, of course, I guess. Ouch. Oh, and I suppose it's nice to have a break from that insufferable brat. My stepdaughter, that is. Oh, yeah, she was uh, looking for you. So, if you know or care. Uh, stepdaughter, pets, favorite food, debate tips. What is Lusitania like? Satan, goals of life, favorite drink. Uh, well, we met her stepdaughter and be like, why don't we talk about her? Don't get me started about her. She's a thorn in my side that I can't seem to remove. Have you tried tweezers? Those get thorns out pretty easily. You just gotta get a good pair from Target and you just... Oh, sorry, you're talking. She's my late husband's daughter. How dare he die and leave me alone with the brat. The audacity. The gall. The gumption. Take care of her as you will your own, he said. His final parting gift to me. A job. It's like someone moving away and saying, you hold, you look after this cactus now. If I had a daughter, she'd be nothing like that weak, indecisive, goody-two-shoes. Tell me, do you have children of your own? <laughs> God, no. Why Why would I want that? They sound horrible. Anyway, why are you so mean to your kids? No, and I don't want any. Uh, no, but I'd like to have kids someday. No, because then she'll try to pawn her kid off on me. And I prefer pets over tiny, weak humans. Uh, I'm just gonna go with no, and I don't want any. Hmm. Not interested. No solicitors, including you. Especially you, lady. Smart. They're nothing but trouble. Only good for ensuring a bloodline continues. I can do that. I mean, I can't, considering how many transfusions I've needed in the last year, but still. And if she's not of your blood, it's all negatives. Yeah, let's check the map, because uh, maybe we want to... The convention center about to close for the day, but the night is young. Time to head to the nightclub. Oh, I guess we're going to the nightclub now. Spending time on your own? Okay, I'll spend time on my own, I guess, at the, the nightclub. I didn't realize I was just going to leave the VIP section. She's just like, oh, children are awful. And I'm like, agreed. Well, bye. Enjoy your children. You can't see any familiar faces in the crows of dancing villains. And the crows? Did they, do you mean crowds? 
I mean, maybe not. I mean, crows are kind of scary. You decide that you're your own best company, so you proceed to have a drink, dance a bit, and go back to the hotel. Alright, that's, that's not too bad. That's pretty cool. Alright. And then, that will bring us to the third day of the convention. And that third day of the convention will happen on another day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. We made some pretty good progress. I think Nova is our best bet. Um, Lusitania princess lady seems nice. Not so much your stepmom. Doesn't seem interested. But you know what? I mean, if we end up changing course and deciding to go that way instead, well then, I mean, she probably won't care. I mean, I probably shouldn't expect a wedding present if that goes that way, but I don't know. We like Nova because having a, a, a robot waifu in, in, to, to a villain, that sounds pretty cool. But thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button so you can see what happens on the third day. Will we become more than friends with Nova? You'll have to subscribe and find out. Thank you so much. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.